I'm Tim Miller Morgan, and uh, I'm an extension veterinarian with Oregon Sea Grant Extension, and I folk, my work is mainly with aquatic species. What I'm going to talk about right now is some things we need to think about when we're handling fish. And uh, the first thing when we're going to handle fish in a captive setting is we always want to wear, wear gloves when we're going to handle the fish. And the reason that we do that is that fish have a very delicate mucus layer on their skin and that layer can be disrupted by the oils on our fingers. Plus, many fish have rough skin or spines, and this also helps protect us as well. Now, you're gonna, sometimes you'll hear some disagreement if you look at food fish aquaculture, there's a lot of handling fish without gloves, but what we're really focusing here are fish that are in public aquarium, fish that are in home aquariums, we wanna be extra careful about handling them and not doing any damage. So gloves are the first thing. The next thing that we need to think about are nets for handling the fish. And when we think of nets, we think of things like this, we think of the little scoop aquarium nets. The key with a net is that a net is really a herding device, not a device for carrying or capturing fish. And this is a little different from what many of you may be used to if you're fishing and you scoop the fish out of the water. So when we're using a net like this, if I had my druthers, I would actually use a zip tie and pull it tight so that you actually can't catch the fish into it. Um, and the other thing when we're thinking about a net is you want to think about the material the net is made from. If it's a knotted material, if the fish flops around in the net, it will, can damage the skin. So you want a material that is knotless and it is as smooth as possible. Now there are a lot of different nets out there. There's, there's these kind of nets. There are <clears throat> um, what we call bag nets. And what's nice about a bag net is that you can catch the fish in this and then if you hold it in the right way, you can actually keep the fish in water in the net, which is really nice because if a fish is air exposed and flopping around, you can imagine that that would be stressful for the fish. Well, we've done some studies here at OSU that have sh has shown that if you let a fish, in this case it was a juvenile salmon, flop around in a net in the air for 10 seconds, you have a measurable immunosuppression in that fish that lasts for 30 days. So. If we, the more we can keep the fish in the water, the more we can keep the stress levels down when we're handling the fish, the better. Because stress equals immunosuppression and reduced disease resistance, as well as the risk for damage to the fish during capture. So these are all things we're trying to avoid. So this is an example of a bag net. Normally they're clear, but we've disinfected this with an iodine-based solution, so it's stained. There are other types of nets as well. This is, isn't even really a net. This is called a fish scoop. And what's nice about this, it's good for small fish, is that you just go into the tank and you can scoop the fish up and you actually keep the fish in water at the same time. And if you've got too much water, there's a hole in the end so you can just dump it out. So this works really well. Now with some fish keeping, there's, they've evolved specialized equipment. So if we're dealing with koi, they have very special equipment for handling, handling them and making sure that we reduce the risk of stress but also damage. So with koi, they have nets that are flat already and you merely use the net and this is net actually you can have up to an eight foot pole on the end of it and this net allows you just to guide the fish into some kind of container now in this case typically what you'll see in the koi industry is what was called a koi bowl and so this would be floating in the water and you would tip it up and you would use the net to guide the koi into the t bowl and into the water that's in the bowl and then the fish would be floating in the water in the bowl just like this and we'll demonstrate this in a minute. Now there's different sizes of bowls depending on the size of fish you're using. Um, these bowls are in the koi industry tend to always be blue because it shows off the color of the fish better. Uh, there are also lids that you can get that go around here to keep the fish from jumping out because that's something you need to worry about. So what we'll tend to use, because these can be very expensive. Uh, this one I think is $65, so it's very expensive. So what we like to use are the Rubbermaid or the Sterlite containers that you can buy at any big box store. And what's nice about these is that you, you can get them in there and then they have lids that lock. So if the fish tries to jump out, it will hit the top. Now you can drill a hole so that you can put an air stone in there if you need to. The other thing we like to do is is put the volume on the outside because as you'll see when we sedate a fish in a few minutes, we sedate the fish, we add the drug to the water that the fish is in. 
and the dosage is based on the amount of water, not the weight of the fish, which is a little bit unique from other animals. So we have different types of totes. Here we have another tote for smaller fish. Again, they're all very cheap, um, and we just write the volume on the side. It makes it very easy. Some other things that you can do if you're thinking ahead and you're doing, say, an exam on a fish, sometimes we'll have a tote like this and we'll glue a mirror in the bottom so that when the fish is in the tote, you can actually get an idea if there's any lesions on the bottom or anything that you need to be thinking about as you're examining the fish. Plus, as soon as you try to handle the fish, you're going to change its behavior, so the more we can keep our hands off, the better. <clears throat> Jumping back to nets again and koi, we have different size nets for koi. So this is for smaller koi. And then we have some for even smaller koi because these fish are graded and moved regularly as they're being produced. So this is for even smaller koi. And we even have nets for very small koi. And this is actually a net that they use in the koi industry in Japan when they're, screen when they're culling new fish. And they'll actually go through and hold each individual fish in the net and examine it and decide if it's one that they're going to continue to grow on or it's one they're going to cull and discard. And so they have very specialized equipment. The other thing about koi and many other fish as well is as they get bigger they've got um, their, as their bodies get bigger they have to be well supported if you're going to handle them. So what they need to, you need to do is develop equipment that allow you to move big fish while keeping their whole body supported and at the same time, you don't want to have knots or mesh that could damage their skin. So what they've developed is what's called a koi sock. And what this does is allows you to catch the fish. You would come in and you'd orient the fish so that it's fit, the fish comes, its head goes in here. Then you bring it in and then you would grab the back of this net and flip this up and you could carry the fish with water in it. And, it, and as I hope you can imagine it would be fully supported under here as you're moving it. And the nice thing is, is the back of the net is open, so when you go back into the water, you just move this off and the fish slides right out. Now this has progressed to other types of um, netting or carrying equipment with other fish. So with sharks, they use stretchers. And, uh, but this is, you'll see this very commonly in the koi industry in the United States, in Japan, and basically all over the world. These koi nets are used for moving large fish. So the whole point again is that when we're moving fish, we need to make sure they're in a secure environment where they can't injure themselves. You're using nets to guide the fish, not to pick them up. And that if you do have to pick the fish up, they are well supported in those nets so that they don't, they don't damage their internal organs or their skin. <clears throat>